Vikings and uh, Vikings Valhalla are two series on Netflix that I find interesting. Not just because these are History Channel productions, but because their storyline is also shrouded in history. Cultures of the past close to being forgotten, but revived so that we could be well educated about the history of the world. But what's odd was that even before those times, there were already clashes of religions, which up to this time never seemed to rest. In those past, it was a clash of beliefs on the Norse gods and Christianity. It was hard to say. It would be hard to distinguish during those times who was right and who was wrong. Sad to say, this subjectivism is still a trouble today, most especially when you add atheism and worldview individualism to the mix. For those of you who have not yet watched Vikings in Netflix, I encourage you to watch. I encourage you to watch it because what we will talk about today will revolve in their storyline which has a direct semblance of what is happening today. Hi, this is Christopher Nino Arca and you're watching Bible in Focus, where we will talk about our experiences and human conditions in light to sacred scripture. The first series entitled Vikings revolved on the story of Ragnar Lothbrok. Before anything else, by the way, for today, we will be reading from the text of the uh, New American Bible Revised Edition, Bible Translation. To continue, the story of Ragnar Lothbrok, a simple folk, a farmer, so to speak, thrown to the position of an earl, a title of some sort likened to a lord, a town leader. During those times, it was a battle of towns for supremacy, increasing land territories. Then from being an earl, he had to battle and kill a king for betraying him. All this time, he had with him a certain monk, Athelstan, whom he took when their group sailed from the coast of Scandinavia, a uh, trading town called Katakat and raided Northumbria. It was an early medieval Anglo-Saxon kingdom and uh, was in what it is now called the Northern England and Southern Scotland. This land is what connects England and Scotland. You might be surprised that this series is based on actual historical records with their actual names being used and events on how they unfold. Anyway, Athelstan was a monk tasked to transcribe the Holy Scripture. He took with him the Holy Book when he was taken as a slave by Ragnar Lothbrok. So he took Athelstan as a slave and yet did not treat him as one. In time, Ragnar grew fond of this Athelstan to the point of becoming friends. Ragnar delighted in Athelstan's strength in his belief, and so Ragnar became curious about Christianity and about Jesus Christ. Ragnar asked Athelstan, How different is your God from our gods? How, how can your dead God even save you? If you actually listen to if you actually listen to their discussions. These are valid questions alive even today. How can you understand who God is, God the Father, from the lesser gods of the other religions? Yes, God the Father acknowledges these lesser gods, for, for they were the fallen angels cast down from heaven together with Lucifer, their leader. They were the ones granted dominion over certain regions all around the world. 
thus forming different belief system all around the globe. They were cast down from heaven after the point of creation. And we could, uh, we could read that text right in the book of Revelation. That's in uh, chapter 12, verse 9. That's Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. Listen to this. The huge dragon, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world, was thrown down to earth, and its angels were thrown down with it. After the great war in the heavens, when Lucifer enticed a number of angels to fight with him against God, they were cast down to the earth, not hell. And you will even wonder why. Back to that later on. So if you would ask how many angels Lucifer deceived to join him in the fight and fell, it is in, <coughs> in, in verse 4 of the same chapter, here in chapter 12. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. So Satan took with him one third of the angelic host. This brings us back to our previous question. Why earth? Now let us read from the Bible. I'll share with you the reading that we will be discussing today. And that is Psalms 28, verses 1 to 5. Psalms 82, by the way, sorry. That's Psalms 82, verses 1 to 8. All right. Verse 1. God takes a stand in the divine council, gives judgment in the midst of the gods. Verse 2, How long will you judge unjustly and favor the cause of the wicked? Verse 3, Defend the lowly and fatherless, render justice to the afflicted and needy, rescue the lowly and poor, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Verse 5, <clears throat> The gods neither know nor understand, wandering about in darkness, and all the world's foundations shake. And listen very carefully in verse 6. I declare, gods though you be, offspring of the Most High, all of you, yet like any mortal you shall die, like any prince you shall fall. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for yours are all the nations. These fallen angels turned out to be now the pagan gods of all world religions, granted by God the Father to reign in the belief systems of man. For a time, these fallen angels were granted oversight to different countries. That's right. You could you would be surprised. And as it is written in the scripture, specifically in Deuteronomy 32, Deuteronomy 32, verses 8 to 9. Mm. When the Most High allotted each nation its heritage, when He separated out human beings, he set up the boundaries of the people after the number of the divine beings. But the Lord's portion was his people. His allotted share was Jacob. Here in verse 8, divine beings, also called sons of God, are members of the divine assembly, specifically his angels. These angels who fell on earth were given different roles, and God kept Israel for himself. God created the entire world 
Everything belongs to him. And yet Israel was his chosen inheritance from which he chose to bless the entire world. Now, if we go back on our reading in Psalms 82, you would then realize that these fallen angels took the form of being local deities like Odin, Thor, the, the Mesopotamian gods, Greek gods, all these pagan gods, Hindus, Buddhists. For they were the angelic hosts who chose women to mate with so they would have sons in the end. And that is written also here in the scripture in Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4. That's Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. Listen to this. When human beings began to grow numerous on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God, these angels, saw how beautiful the daughters of human beings were. And so they took for their wives whomever they pleased. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not remain in, in human beings forever, because they are only flesh. Their days shall comprise a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim appeared on earth in those days, as well as later, after the sons of God had intercourse with the daughters of human beings who bore them sons. They were the heroes of old, the men of renown. The Nephilims here are what, called, are what God called as abominations. No angels would actually dare touch any female human beings of the earth except the fallen angels who are already here, including Satan himself. They were the ones who have every reason to act sacrilegiously against God, for they always rebel against the Almighty. And since they know what befalls them if they dare directly assault God, they are doing the very next thing, and that is to desecrate and destroy God's creation, thus hurting the Father. Now you might tell me what a crazy thing to say. The fact remains that prior to the creation of our world, the creation of the celestials already happened. Let's go to Nehemiah. <clears throat> That's Nehemiah um, chapter 9, verse 6. That's Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. You are the Lord, you alone. You made the heavens, the highest heavens and all their host, the earth and all that is upon it, the seas and all that is in them. To all of them you gave life. The heavenly hosts bow down before you. And we could also very well know and remember that it was the very first verse on even the first chapter of Genesis, when God made the heavens and the earth. We cannot really say when that rebellion in heaven happened, but every biblical scholar could carefully assume was that the fallen angels and Satan came into this world when order was already in place. For it was when the perfection of creation magnifies the glory of the, of the Creator and we always know that Satan craves the destruction of order. Let me repeat that. For it was when the perfection of creation magnifies the glory of the Creator. And that we always know that Satan craves the destruction of the order. So these fallen angels made themselves known to man as cosmic beings in different parts of the world, reshaping themselves 
to look earthly like any elements known to man, and yet unearthly nonetheless. For they wanted to shift the attention of man towards them, and not to God. For a and so for a time they succeeded. Look at the folklore of Mesopotamia. Egyptian myths of Greeks, Romans, Hindus, Buddhists, the Norse gods of the Germanic folklore. They managed to shift the attention of men to worship them and not the one true God. And so the verse 5 of our reading, which is Psalms 82, hold, holds true. Let us go back to Psalms 82. <clears throat> and in verse 5 it reads the gods know the, the gods neither know nor understand wandering about in darkness and all the world's foundations shake for these gods these lesser gods are the children of darkness. They make their presence known to men by shaking the earth under their feet, causing human beings to fear them. For these fallen angels hold such power. These lesser gods will never understand anything good, for they fell out of God's grace and favor. And now they are enticing human beings to be afraid of them and also fall from grace. In, in verse 2, it says, How long will you judge unjustly and favor the cause of the wicked? This verse exemplifies the truth, the true intention of these fallen angels, these lesser gods, these gods and goddesses of all other religions. When you advocate especially innocent and human sacrifice that is not of the Lord God's, of the God the Father. These fallen angels show their true color when they favor the sinners, the wicked, over the righteous and the innocent. The Almighty Father and Jesus Christ never do this kind of injustice. In the Old Testament, <clears throat> in a way, God allowed these fallen angels to become the local deities and thus flourish as lesser gods. Holding dominion in different regions of the world, somehow making these fallen angels useful and atone for their rebellion against him and see what they will do with this responsibility given to them. And it proved God right. These fallen angels, these lesser gods, as people believe, as deities, created confusion in humanity by establishing different world religions. That man will fall into the trap by making him believe that God the Almighty in the scriptures is just like them no different and thus equal with his local deities. This is what we now know as secularism. And now you know the danger of secularism. For God the Father is very different and way above from these lesser gods. And God started to manifest his glory when he chose Abraham. When he chose the line of Abraham, God started to make man know that he is here, quietly observing humanity. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12. That's Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. The Lord said to Abraham, The Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your land 
your relatives and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the families of the earth will find blessing in you. When God called Abraham, he gave man a chance of redemption by choosing a bloodline that will cause a blessing for all of humanity. Back when during the great flood, God cleansed the world from all traces of abomination and sin. He called Abraham so that man may partake in the redemptive and salvific process of man. God could have caused himself to appear to humanity through Jesus Christ out of thin air. Out of thin air, which God can do, but he did not. God wanted to share the act of salvation by making man lift every effort he has to earn God's grace of salvation. And thus salvation history began to unfold starting with the calling of Abraham. This was when God started to actively show his presence to humanity. Try to remember events happening after this. The three visitors of Abraham who happened to pass by him on their way to Sodom and Gomorrah. God causing a son for Abraham. And then Jacob and his twelve sons. God started to manifest himself through them. And thus make people realize that the gods that they previously believed at, they exist all right. They are real. But they are created beings like the rest of us like the rest of us human beings and that they can die and these local deities these lesser gods can also die like us because they as you can see they are lesser gods they're not jesus christ they're not god the father let's, let's go back to our reading in psalms 82 on verse verses 6 to 7 And I declare, gods, though you be offspring of the Most High, all of you, yet like any mortal, you shall die. Like any prince, you shall fall. For there is only one true God, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is only the one true holy trinity so let us pray forever shall we be your children O father we are the sheep and you are our lord keep us safe in your fold for we do not want to get lost give us insight for we are prone to confusion grant us a discerning mind through thy spirit and let us live in your love. Amen. So we, uh, before we end today's program here in Bible in Focus, we would, like to make, we would like to make a reminder. We would like to remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of our Holy Week Biblical Recollection. This is for three days, for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Black Saturday. It will be aired here in the City of God Ministry at 1 p.m. And that would be on uh, April 14, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, April 15, and 16, which is Black Saturday. So we hope that you will join us here in our three-day um, Holy Week Biblical Recollection. So keep safe and God bless. <music>